Now, I may be going out on a limb here, but I believe that in America, God wanted to take that freedom to another level and bring supernatural healing to all of those hurt by slavery, to those bound by racism, those hurt, those filled with resentment, but he wanted to do it through the church. Usually any time that God wants to do something on earth or to show up with his great power, he wants to do it through the church. When he sent out the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he did it through his church. Those 120 believers in the upper room, he does it through his church. And I think when God used a black man, the son of former slaves by the name of William Seymour to preach the gospel out in Los Angeles back in 1906 and the Holy Spirit fell upon his congregation in a powerful way, the people begin to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, something that was not common at all in American religion at that time. God was trying to say something to his church. He was trying to send a very strong message to America, but he wanted his church to do it. God has never been a supporter of racism, of prejudice of any kind. He has designed his church to be neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, but simply all one in his beloved son, Jesus. And I believe he was so desirous to bring healing to the racist division in America, but he wanted to use the church. He wanted it to begin in the church, in the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, we are the salt of the earth. We are the city set on a hill. And what better way to begin a nationwide healing affecting every part of society than through the voice of the church of Jesus Christ, through the example of the church of Jesus Christ. Oh, the Spirit came on that congregation on Azusa Street in, in Los Angeles. It wasn't a fancy building. It wasn't very big. But the power of the Holy Spirit was there. And lives were dramatically changed. All races gathered together. They received the same Jesus. They received the same Holy Spirit. They worshiped together. They broke bread together, something that had never been done in America before. All races worshiping Christ under the same roof. And they were taking the message back to where they traveled from. All over America, in some cases, different parts of the world. It was just like the early church in the book of Acts. All ethnicities, nationalities, languages, everyone coming together, worshiping the same God. Experiencing the same outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And if you look back at some of the pictures of the leadership from Azusa Street, you see all races standing there, praying, seeking God for his spirit to come and change lives. Oh, how pleased, how happy God must have been. This was what he wanted the church to be the standard bearer for the rest of the nation. But unfortunately, even after eight glorious years of the Holy Spirit outpouring, the mindset of men and women did not change. And even within that congregation and leadership there at Azusa Street, divisions over race broke out. Now, Brother Seymour continued to pastor the church and preach the same message but the change and the healing that God so desired for, for America by using his church to do it did not happen. Maybe it was a small start, but it wasn't firm enough to, to make a great impact on society that I believe God wanted to happen. And I think if the church would have responded as God was using and speaking through Brother Seymour, a man, a son of former slaves, as he was preaching his Bible messages, changes could have been made in American society without the cost of many, many lives that we've seen through the years. The anger, the resentment, the racism, God wanted to heal it. He wanted to purge it and make it all perfect. He wanted to use his church to lead the way.